Hello guys, welcome to another video. Let me ask you a question. Can you tell me the difference and similarities of structs and classes? Well, uh, you maybe don't know the answer. If that's the case, well, this video is for you. If you already know all the things about that, well, maybe this is a good reminder. So yeah, today we're gonna talk about structs and classes in Swift. Yeah, pure Swift. And in fact, we're gonna start a series of videos about all the features related to the Swift language because it's all things and yeah, re really great and powerful things. So let's get started. My name is Pete and this, this is Swift and Tips. Before actually talking about structures and classes, we need to touch two important topics. The difference between a reference and a value type. These two concepts are really important, not only for Swift, but for all programming language in general. And could save you a lot of time when you are debugging your code looking for the root of changes of any object. First, let's talk about value types. A value type is a type whose value is copied when it's assigned to a variable or constant, or also passed to a function. For example, if we make an assignation to a variable equal uh, this shape, each variable will have a new copy of the object. That means that local modification don't affect other variables. Every instance of those values lives independent of each other. However, for reference types, the thing is quite different. Here, any assignation for a variable, constant, or parameter or function of an object is actually making reference of or pointing to a memory address of or of that object which means that any modification of your object's property will reflect the same change for all variables pointing to the same object. That's why knowing about reference and value type is really important in Swift. Sometimes you could make change in an object, and that object is changed across your app when you only wanted to uh, a copy isolated to the rest of assignations. For those cases, it's better than the usage of value types. But other times, you require to keep a single object and changes on it should be reflected in the whole application. Then here is better a reference type. Fun fact, actually, uh, the copy is not implemented right away because Swift waits until receiving a modification in one of the values of the, you know, value types uh, to actually make this copy. This is something called copy on write and is used for performance, right? Saving time because if you are using the same object and both contain the same information, what is the point of making a copy, right? So this is something really cool. Also, Internally, the memory allocation works different. For value types, the memory is stored in the stack. And for reference, we use the heap. And also, for reference, we require to keep the counting of how many objects are making reference to our instance. Uh, but that's another topic for another video, by the way. But this is in fact one of the main reasons why Apple recommends to use value types by default instead of reference types. Value types are more efficient in terms of memory management. Okay, now that we know the basics of reference and value types, it's time to actually talking about structures and classes. So let's get started with Xcode. Okay, here we have our playground in Xcode with one structure and one class. If you just read the code with no extra info, 
you probably could say that both are pretty similar. And in fact, they are. In both, uh, you can, for example, define properties to store values, define methods to provide functionality, define subscripts to provide access to their values using subscript syntax, Set up initializers. Use extensions to add new functionalities. And conform protocols. However, here we're going to start with the difference. Big differences, actually. Structs are value types and classes are reference types. So all the things we just discussed, discussed at the beginning apply here. Assigning a struct creates a new copy and assigning a class creates a pointer to the memory containing the class object. Additionally, there are some things that classes don't have. For example, inheritance. Yeah, a struct cannot inherit from a struct, class, or anything. Only protocols, eh, but one too many. Typecasting by subclassing, because again, only classes can inherit from other classes. And finally, a class can have uh, the initializers to free up resources if it's necessary. On the other side, one thing that the structs have and classes don't are the member-wise initializers, which are the false initializers for free for structs. However, you may lose it if you create a custom init in your struct. At least to create that new one in an extension. In general, integers, floating point numbers, booleans, strings, arrays, dictionaries, and of course, Swift UI views are structs, while UI views and view controllers in UIKit are classes, for example. Let's see now how we can access properties and methods for structs and classes. In both structures and classes, you can use dot syntax to actually access properties and functions and drill down into sub properties too. Finally, I would like to talk about identity operator which sometimes could be confused uh, versus equality operator. You can use it when you want to know if an object is identical in terms of its memory address against other. Let's see an example. Here, what identity operator is doing is actually checking if the memory address is equal uh, against both objects. If that's the case, then the result will be true. Okay. This is useful, for example, if you work, I don't know, maybe with algorithms and you try to create a tree and you want to uh, compare two nodes, for example, this is really useful to just compare if you are uh, navigating again uh, in a visited uh, node. Uh, but yeah, this is so related to classes because, well, as we mentioned, it's the only way to keep the same reference 
uh, against multiple instances. In the other side, the equality operator normally acts uh, overloaded for custom objects and structs uh, and classes, and normally you should confirm equalitable protocol to describe why does it mean equal. Uh, let's see another example. Here we have our rule. In this case, we are making uh, an object equal to other if both name and age are equal. But this is something that we should decide. I mean, this this could be any kind of logic that we can um, confirm in order to make uh, two objects equal in terms of the meaning, you know, not the address. Just keep it, keep that in mind because it's really important. And of course, uh, the identity operator use three equal signs together, but for the uh, e equality operator is just two. In summary, always remember the usage of structs over classes. Unless you need some Objective-C interaction, um, something called interoperability. Also, when the meaning of multiple copies of the same object don't, don't make any sense. Uh, for example, if you have a global configuration and you want to keep uh, if any, any part of the application make any uh, change to your object and that object should reflect the same change across your whole application, well, that's a good uh, way to use classes over over structs. Um, also, if you're caring about the identity of something or the memory in this case is important, well, classes are also a good approach. I hope you enjoyed the video. Is that the case? Don't forget to leave your like and subscribe to my channel. Also, we have the comments below. So in case you want to give me any feedback or any recommendations about future videos, I would like to hear all of you. Also, remember, uh, in the future, we're going to start covering more about Pure Swift. Um, I'm planning videos like uh, functions, closures, uh, generics, uh, even more detail about, for example, opac types. But that's a future. For now, that's it for, for this video. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye.